More than 48 hours after the blast, rescue workers are still picking their way through the wreckage of the devastated buildings. Dogs have been brought in to sniff out the living, but more often, the dead. An American team has joined hundreds of Israeli soldiers in the search. More often than not, the result is retrieval rather than rescue, but sometimes the painstaking work pays off. Two days after the blast, a mother and son rescued from the top floor of the nearby bank building. Earlier, Sammy Nganga was plucked from the rubble. He'd lost a foot, but after more than 30 hours, was still alive. His Israeli rescuers took time to check his condition in Nairobi Hospital. They were accompanied by the Israeli ambassador to Kenya. Outside the hospital, crowds gathered to discover if friends or relations were among the 542 people injured badly enough to be hospitalized. Some of the most seriously injured were flown to Ramstein Air Base in Germany for specialist treatment. It won't be the only Mercy flight the medical teams will make. The airplane that you will see arrive today will turn around, uh, we will put a fresh crew on it, and it will uh, depart to go right back to Nairobi. Uh, and there are plans for other flights as well. Back in Nairobi, the search was on for the perpetrators as well as survivors and bodies. President Daniel Arif Moy said his government had some clues he wouldn't elaborate. A shadowy Islamic group claimed responsibility, enough for the Israeli Prime Minister to point the finger. Well, I can say that uh, the fact that uh, Islamic fundamentalist organizations or front groups took credit for this savagery uh, is uh, an indication, uh, one indication of uh, the direction of who the perpetrators are, but I think it's too early to say uh, with any uh, amount of uh, certainty who precisely uh, committed this uh, murder. The United States has promised to bring to justice those responsible for the devastation, but has also warned it could take a long time. Closed circuit TV cameras that could have provided vital evidence were destroyed in the Nairobi blast. In Tanzania, it's believed a water tanker that visited the U.S. Embassy daily may have contained the bomb that wrought such devastation in Dar es Salaam. Here, the CCTV cameras remained intact. They may have recorded the events prior to the attack. Security has been beefed up too late for the ten who died.